Today I'm going to talk about all but many lossy trapdoor functions, uh, from now on called ABMLTF, and selective opening uh, secure uh, public key encryption from lattices, from uh, standard lattice assumptions. So uh, as uh, the session chair mentioned, uh, it's a soft merge between two papers, uh, Boy and Lee, uh, from now on uh, referred to BL17, and the second one is uh, is uh, referred to L triple S seventeen. So, uh, so you can distinguish between the results uh, uh, during the talk. So, uh, what are the motivations here? Uh, it's about constructing uh, uh, ABM LTF uh, from lattice assumptions, and uh, we are going to build uh, the selective opening and CCA security. Uh, I mean, CCA secure public key encryptions from from these primitives. So what are the contributions? Uh, the constructions uh, that are provided in these two papers, the first one, uh, the BL17 uses weak PRF, and the second one, LSSS17, will use PRFs. Uh, although they use uh, weak PRF, the BL17 use uh, weak PRF, they, they achieve uh, uh, a weaker uh, security uh, notion that is indistinguishability-based security. Uh, uh, in contrast uh, to, to what we achieve, uh, in fact, LSSS achieve, and that is simulation-based security, which is a stronger uh, uh, security notion than, than the uh, in the, uh, in, the uh, in the SO. So, uh, so there are also other contributions for, for these two papers that uh, I will not discuss in this uh, talk because it's, uh, it's going to be uh, longer than, uh, than my time. So uh, LSSS17 uh, also obtains a tighter security proof for the lattice-based key homomorphic PRFs introduced in BLMR13. And uh, both uh, we, we will achieve tightly secure public key encryption uh, uh, from lattices in the multi-challenge uh, multi setting. So uh, let's uh, start with the definition of lossy trapdoor functions. Uh, this is uh, introduced first in uh, Pyker Waters in 2008. And uh, well, the functions will have two modes, in, 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 in uh, injective mode and the lossy mode. So in the injective mode, so you will be given by an evaluation key and an uh, inverse key. So um, uh, using the evaluation key, you can compute uh, f, that function, at any x in the domain. And uh, using the inverse key, you can recover back the x. In fact, uh, uh, the y, which is achieved, uh, which is uh, the evaluation of f at x, can be reversed back to x using the inversion key. But in the lossy mode, um, although you are given by another evaluation key, uh, which is uh, computationally indistinguishable from the evaluation key in the injective mode, uh, you cannot recover back uh, the x from, from the output of the function. So um, what about all but many uh, the uh, lossy trapdoor functions, the ABM LTFs? Uh, they are introduced first by Hofheinz in 2012. And uh, in, 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 in that paper, uh, the, the modes are kind of parameterized by the tag. So the, the whole set of tags will be partitioned in two, tag, uh, two, two sets, the lossy sets and the, uh, the injective set of the tags. So uh, if a tag belongs to the injective one, then, uh, then uh, it makes the function itself injective that I explained. You can recover back using the inverse key. Uh, and if the T, the tag, belongs to the, to the lossy set, then uh, it makes the function lossy. So uh, usually the tax comes in pairs. There are two parts associated, uh, two, two parts associated to each tag, a primary one and an uh, auxiliary one. So uh, the one of the other properties which would be needed for this construction is the large number of uh, lossy tags. In fact, they should be uh, exponentially many in the security parameter, and um, the other difference is this. Uh, a special uh, private key, uh, tag key, short for TK, that is uh, uh, in response of uh, 
I mean, uh, generating these uh, lossy tags out of the auxiliary part and the tag key. So what are the properties which would be needed for the ABM LTX? Uh, first of all, uh, we would like to have the tag indistinguishability that I explained. So uh, the tag, the, 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 the lossy mode, the tag from the lossy mode and the injective mode, they should be computationally uh, indistinguishable. We would like to have evasiveness, which means that uh, generating new lossy tags should be hard. And uh, well, here I wanted to note that uh, this uh, definition of security, this security model is in contrast to the all but one LTF, where uh, all of the uh, tags uh, except one are the lossy ones. Uh, and the uh, all but none LTFs which are introduced in these two papers. So uh, what does that mean exactly? What, what, what do we mean by ABM LTFs? What's the usage? In fact, they are uh, uh, kind of the same as uh, encrypted messages. Uh, and uh, you can see the lossy tags as the valid signatures. In fact, these signatures uh, that I am talking about it's not only encrypted uh, mess, uh, signatures, you can also replace signatures with max. And uh, the lossy tax means uh, uh, you will have valid signatures or valid max. The evasiveness uh, is kind of the same as having signature uh, unforgeability. Or, or in the Mac case, it, it should look like a random one. And the tag indistinguishability, which comes from the the indistinguishability of encryption scheme. So the idea here is to uh, replace the signatures with the PRFs. So in these two papers, we are trying to do uh, this replacement, this uh, changing between signatures and uh, PRFs. So uh, uh, in fact, we will build uh, weak PRFs and of, of PRFs, which are homomorphic uh, evaluation friendly and they will have long outputs. So uh, the work of BL17 uh, is inspired by the Boyanli IBE, which is appeared in uh, ABE. And in there, they will use uh, encrypted PRFs with uh, single bit outputs in contrast to the, these uh, long outputs that we have. So what about the lattice trapdoors? A little bit of lattices. So uh, this looks a bit ugly because uh, there are too many parameters here. But uh, let me tell you, um, this function f, this, which is uh, introduced uh, in the second bullet of here, it's, it's the trapdoor function with, uh, with input x and e. So uh, the idea is to multiply this x by a concatenation of a random matrix A and AR plus hg and then uh, add the additive noise and uh, take the modulo q. So it should be noted that if H is, uh, is full rank, for example, identity matrix, then, uh, then there, is a, there is an inverse matrix that you can multiply from the right to, the, to that concatenation matrix. And uh, that will make uh, uh, finding the inverse of such a function uh, easy. Although if you take uh, H to be zero matrix, then that would be hard to, to kind of invert this, uh, this function. OK, so, uh, so what about the parameters which are inscribed uh, in these two concatenation of matrices? I mean, this A. Uh, AR plus FG. So FG is the typical gadget matrix, which you probably all know. Uh, but what about A? A comes from LWE, from uh, learning with error. And as I mentioned, uh, if H is uh, zero, then it makes F flossy. And uh, well, the A that you can use here uh, will look like this one. Uh, the uh, a can be replaced by this C, B plus F. And uh, as an special case, you can see this A to be uh, an LWE uh, 
uh, kind of set of samples, in fact, A and AS plus plus E concatenated together. So that, that serves as A itself. Okay, so uh, as I said, we need to have ev evaluation, uh, homomorphic evaluation friendly constructions. For, for that reason, we use the, the typical GSW13 uh, construction, where the gadget matrix will, uh, will have a small inverse uh, with respect to matrix A, and that we call the G inverse of A. And uh, as you can see, you can compute the additions and and uh, multiplications and NAND uh, functions of two ciphertexts, C1 and C2, uh, corresponding to U and V uh, easily by, by just uh, computing G minus C, C1 times, uh, that is small matrix with respect to A times uh, uh, of, of C2. Okay, so, uh, where do we plug in all these uh, PRFs or weak PRFs uh, into ABM LTFs? In fact, uh, the idea from LSSS17 is to use the PRFs, which are conceptually simpler than the weak PRFs. And the construction itself is also simpler than the construction in the BL17. Uh, well, we'll use uh, the equality circuit, which, is, uh, which checks if x equals y. And uh, we, in fact, uh, plug in this, uh, this equality of the PRF evaluated at, at the auxiliary part of the tag and, uh, and, uh, and the tag, uh, the, the first part, the, the, the primary part of the tag. Uh, and we check if these two are equal. And, and that will go uh, instead of, I mean, uh, as, a, as a role of hatch. So the whole thing which, which is underlined will be the hatch. So that's for the uh, injective mode. But for the lossy mode, to generate a lossy tag, what would we do is to, to, to get a lossy tag generation uh, key, which we call the, the tag key. And we put it uh, as the key for the PRF that we use to generate hatch. And given the, the auxiliary part of the tag, we can easily compute uh, uh, the primary part of the tag by evaluating the PRF at, at that uh, auxiliary part of the T. So uh, just note that if PRF is evaluated at, at TA and that equals to TP, then, then that equality will be, will be satisfied and that, that will, then we will have uh, zero instead of H. So the lossy mode uh, is equivalent to have H equal to zero. Okay, so what about BL17? They will use the weak PRFs instead of the PRFs. Um, note that weak PRFs are pseudo-random, given the random input-output samples. And uh, the output of a weak PRF is just a bit. It's not a string of binary elements. They will also use chameleon hash functions. And, uh, well, the idea is to, again, construct one hatch to be inscribed uh, in that uh, concatenation of matrices. And uh, what they do is just to insert a linear combination of parts of the, the tag key uh, with coefficients coming from the weak PRF. So the weak PRF uh, will output the bits. So these, are, these will serve as the coefficients. And then there will be some parts of the tag key which will be inscribed to the, to the uh, to the matrix which will serve as the hatch. So to generate the, the lossy tag T, they just use the output of the chameleon hash function to find the auxiliary part of the, uh, the, the, the lossy tag. Because, uh, because uh, they, they again want to have that uh, hatch matrix equal to zero equivalent to lossy mod. Okay, so what is achieved using these two constructions? Uh, the tag in indistinguishability will be achieved, in fact. So uh, in the injective mode, the, the random tag T uh, will have, uh, will have the, the auxiliary part as a random one and the primary one as a random one. But in the lossy mode, the auxiliary part will be again random one, 
but by the methods, the two methods that I described in, in the previous two slides, the primary part will look like a random one. It will be a pseudo-random one. The evasiveness will be achieved give, uh, by, by, uh, by the fact that given TA, given the auxiliary part of the tag, it's, uh, it's hard to predict TP, the, the primary part of the tag. And uh, what we will achieve, in fact, both both paper, uh, is the selective opening attack. Uh, I mean, uh, security against these kind of attacks. But what is a sec selective opening attack? In these kind of attacks, uh, there will be n ciphertext given to the, uh, to the challenger. The, the challenger will select a subset of these ciphertexts and open them for the, for the adversary. In fact, uh, the challenger will reveal both the messages and the randomness uh, that, that is used to generate these ciphertexts. But uh, keep a couple of them, like uh, and order the complement of those n, uh, unopened. In fact, in this example, there are three, three ciphertexts given to the challenger. The challenger will open the first and the third one. In fact, it reveals the message and the randomness, those red ones. And now the question that we will be asked is that uh, does M2 remain secure? In fact, uh, can we show uh, the indistinguishability of uh, C2 with respect to another gen new, a fresh generated encryption? So uh, that's in fact the notion of indistinguishable selective opening security. In fact, we would like to have unopened ciphertext to be computationally indistinguishable from the ciphertext which are freshly resampled from the message space. It's also written down here in terms of the mathematics. So both, uh, I mean, all three, M1, M2, M3, are, are uh, distributed uh, based on that distribution D. So uh, given that uh, M1 and M3 are opened for the challenger, for the adversary, by the challenger. I uh, would like to resample this uh, M2 prime. And you would like to have these two encryptions computationally indistinguishable. In fact, the first one, the one on the left, is the ciphertext which was not opened. And uh, the one on the right is the one which is, uh, which is freshly sampled. So this uh, resampling might not be efficient. Uh, but uh, this is what uh, the notion will ask you. OK. So both the schemes, BL17 and LSSS17, will achieve indistinguishable selective opening CCA uh, security for a public key encryption, which is described on this slide. So the idea of construction for both the, the schemes is kind of the same. We'll both use this double LTF evaluation construction described in, that, uh, in those two papers, in the PyCat paper and in the half Heinz paper. And the idea is to have uh, a triplet of ciphertexts. Uh, the, the first one is just a universal hash process message to hide the, the message. The, the second part is just the LTF without any AVM. It's just kind of uh, a, a trapdoor function. And the last one, the, the last part of the ciphertext is uh, is the ABM LTF that we described uh, so far in these two uh, constructions for, for that tag T. So uh, the lossy tags will be used to, uh, to respond to challenge ciphertext. So in fact, it will provide the indistinguishability, the tag indistinguishability. And the uh, decryption queries will be responded using the injective tags. And, uh, uh, and there we will use the evasiveness of the property. So there are some tweaks on the construction. For example, LSSS17 will also use a MAC for, because that would be needed later on for, for, uh, for to achieve some security. And uh, BL17 will also use their own uh, tricks. But uh, the general idea of, I mean, the concept the high view of the construction will look like this one. OK, so what is achieved? 
In fact, let's uh, look at first uh, on the simulation-based SO, selective opening security. And that is to ask uh, uh, a simulator to, to output exactly what is, uh, what is uh, produced by an adversary which has seen the public keys and the ciphertext and the open ciphertext. So the adversary in this case, in the simulation-based selective opening, the adversary will see the public key, the ciphertext, the, the open ciphertext, and then output something. But uh, we would like to have a simulator which, which only sees the messages, the open messages, and we will ask the simulator to, to produce the same thing. Okay. And uh, if this simulator can also be computed only with the open messages, then uh, the CMSO security is achieved. So this is a stronger uh, security notion than indistinguishability, uh, selective opening. Uh, and, uh, and there are only a few uh, simulation-based selective opening CCA public key encryption. For example, the first one is based on, the first two constructions are based on the standard assumption. Uh, Sorry. The yes, standard assumptions, but the encryption is bit by bit. Uh, the last one is based on a random oracle model, and the second one is uh, uh, it's, it's based on non-standard assumptions. But it does have uh, uh, smaller ciphertext. So, uh, so we'll achieve, in fact, L triple S. Uh, 17 will achieve simulation uh, selective opening uh, CCA. Uh, and uh, that's going to be based on standard lattice assumptions. And uh, we'll make use of these well-known results from Belair in 2009, which, uh, which says that uh, if you are uh, given by an indistinguishable uh, selective opening secure public key, and if you uh, couple it with, a, with an efficient opener, uh, then uh, that, will, uh, that will give you a simulation based selective opening secure public key encryption. So the only thing we need to provide here is, a, is an efficient opener, okay? So uh, I'm not going to give the details of uh, constructing the opener in LSSS17. But uh, just giving a, a definition of the, the opener. So uh, what, what does the opener uh, do is that uh, given a cipher text C or of the message M and randomness R, then uh, for any other me message M prime in the message space, the opener should give you a new randomness R prime where the, the cipher text uh, coming from the M and R is uh, just the cipher text. It's, it's, it's exactly equal to the cipher, the new cipher text from the M prime and, and R prime. And if you, uh, if you achieve, uh, I mean, if you construct such an such a efficient opener, then you can achieve the simulation selective opening security. And in fact, L triple S17 will achieve simulation uh, Selective opening uh, CCA uh, CCA secure uh, security. Okay, finally. Uh, well, time to conclude. So, uh, both scheme constructed ABM LTFs from lattices. One used weak PRF. One used uh, PRF. Uh, both schemes are uh, in indistinguishable selective opening CCA. Uh, the one given in LSSS17 is simulation-based SO CCA, which is kind of uh, stronger than the, the, the second bullet. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we also achieve tightly secure in CCA secure public key encryption, and that is one of the contributions that I uh, promise not to discuss here.
So that's the end of the talk. Thank you.